Good morning, Kid Town. Welcome back to another edition of Virtual VBS for the summer of 2020. Mr. Kevin, good morning to you, buddy. Good morning to you, Mr. Alex. Good to see you. And you? I like your choice of blue shirt. It's the same Thank shirt you. you wore last week. As is yours. Gross. All right, guys, we're going to sing the same song that we sang last week, okay, because we want to make sure we remind ourselves that church is in us and between us, and God is with us and for us. So Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, we're going to sing it, and make sure you follow Mr. Kevin so you can clap along. All right, then Christ, here we go. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. All right, that's pretty good, Mr. Kevin. Let's try it one more time, make sure we got it, okay? Great, all right. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. All right, my friends, we're going to sing a song called Whom Shall I Fear to remind us what it's like when we face scary or confusing situations that God will not leave us or forsake us to deal with those things alone. Mr. Kevin, God is with us, is he not? He is with us, yes. He is with us. Let's sing a song about it. Like to hear it? Here it go. You hear me when I call, you are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. And whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. And whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind, the God of angel armies is always by my side, the one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine, the God of angel armies is always by my side, my strength. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind. God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. All right, Mr. Kevin, I want to sing that part one more time because I really want us to focus on knowing that God goes before us, he stands behind us, and he holds us in his loving arms. And therefore, when fear begins to creep in, when doubt begins to creep in, we know that we are not alone. Amen? Amen. All right, let's sing that again. I know who goes before me. Here we go. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind the God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Boys and girls, men and women. God's faithfulness is with us. We know that his mercies are brand new every morning. So when we wake up each day, it's important to, to take time to say, God, I trust you. I know that you are faithful, that you are with me and for me. And this is a beautiful old hymn. Kevin, we sing this upstairs with the grown-ups, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. It's a great one. All right. So boys and girls, go grab your parents. I think that they should sing this one alongside with you, okay? Okay. 
Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning. I see all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen. Good job. Now let's go find out what happens to Daniel in the lion's den. Hey y'all, I'm Emily. I know Miss Julie talked to y'all last week about Elijah, and she asked you, where do you see the church in the story of Elijah? Let's see what you guys had to say about it. Hey guys, where is church in the story of Elijah? Um, where's the houses? Where the houses? Yeah. Where's the, where's Elijah, or where's the church in the story of Elijah, honey? In the cave. In the, in the cave. cave. Okay. The church is when um, God talks to Elijah. When Elijah went in the cave and God was talking to him, he told him, he had heard a whisper for him to go out of the cave and then he saw all those things. Earthquake, fire. Guys, those were great answers. I want to talk to you about another story today. It's Daniel in the lion's den, and it's from Daniel chapter 6 in the Old Testament. Now, that's the part of the Bible that tells about what happened before Jesus was born. King Nebuchadnezzar. Story. Hey, Assembly. Uh, we heard a story time. Can we get in on this? Story yeah. time. Come on, guys, sit down. Story time. Excellent. Story time. Excellent. Yeah! Uh. King Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem and took many people to Babylon as captives. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel were young Jewish nobles who were taken to the palace to serve the king. 
Now, the Bible says that God gave Daniel favor and an excellent spirit. Because God gave Daniel wisdom to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems for the kings of Babylon, Daniel became the third ruler in charge. When Daniel was about 80 years old, Darius became the king of Babylon. King Darius decided to put Daniel in charge of everyone in the government, and that made the other leaders jealous. The jealous leaders spied on Daniel day and night, trying to find a way to get rid of him. but they could find nothing wrong with Daniel. Daniel prayed and gave thanks to God three times a day, every day. That gave the jealous leaders an idea. Let's get the king to make a new law, they said. No one can pray to anyone except the king. The jealous leaders tricked the king Darius into making the new law. The law said that for 30 days, no one could pray to anybody except King Darius. If they did, they would be thrown into a den of hungry lions. Now, the jealous leaders were certain that Daniel would continue praying and would be eaten by the lions. <laughs> Let's get back to the story. Daniel heard about the law. Now, Daniel could have skipped praying for 30 days, or he could have just prayed in secret. But praying and giving thanks to God were so important to Daniel that he continued to pray three times a day in front of his window. The jealous leaders saw Daniel praying, and they ran to tell the king. King Darius was upset, not because Daniel had broken the law, but because he knew he had been tricked. King Darius couldn't change the law, so he had to throw Daniel into a den of hungry lions. You've been very faithful to your God, King Darius said. Maybe he can save you. King Darius rolled a stone over the den and sealed it so there was no way for Daniel to escape the hungry lions. King Darius went home, but he couldn't sleep at all that night not a wink. As soon as the sun came up, he ran to the den and rolled the stone away. Daniel, he called. Are you okay? Did your God save you? Yes, Daniel shouted. God sent an angel to close the lion's mouths. King Darius brought Daniel out of the lion's den. Look, he said. Daniel doesn't even have a scratch. King Darius made a new law. Daniel's God is the true God. He is the God who rescues. Pray to him instead. Dude, yeah. Daniel made it. I was so worried. Dude, I was on pins and needles. Awesome. I'm so glad Daniel made it. What a what kind of faith is that? That's amazing. Bro. It's like you want to celebrate. 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 Good times. Come on. Yeah. Oh, part time. Guys, I'm, I'm so glad y'all are pumped about this. This is such a cool story about how God rescued Daniel. Yeah. You know, okay. Daniel lived in exile. He was separated from his country, from his family. And just like we are, he was separated from his place of worship. But Daniel continued to pray and give thanks to God. And God was with Daniel. And God is still with us. Yeah. So I was wondering if you guys would talk and think, where is God in this story of Daniel? That's a great oh, question, Miss Emily. Yeah. Like we said, we know a lot of things. I mean, smart. I once saw Jeff doing a Rubik's Cube in like <laughs> 4.7 seconds, but I'm interested too. Where is God in the story of Daniel? Yeah. We would love to hear what the kids have to great. say. Guys, you gotta send in your video to Miss Jasmine this time, and you gotta answer the question. Where is God in the story of Daniel? Daniel? Where is God in the story of Daniel? We Rock look on. forward to hearing what you have yeah. to say. Hey. You know what, though? What? 
Dude, you're always reading my mind. I'm right here, Jet. I'm All right I want to do is right celebrate here. with a craft. Let's do it. Dude, it's, let's time, it's craft time. Let's yeah. go over to Hayden's Craft Corner. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Haley again with Haley's Craft Corner. Jet and Ziggy are here again. Here we are. We made it. Yeah. We're so glad to be here, Miss Haley. Oh, guys, we have such a fun craft today. We are going to be making a lion because we just learned about Daniel and the lion's den in our stories today. And we learned that even though Daniel was separated from his place of worship, God was always with him and he protected him. And even though we can't all be together at church right now, God is always with you and he is always protecting you. And so we are making a line that we will always remember that. And it's going to end up looking like this. Isn't this cute, guys? Fantastic! So cute. So what we're going to do is from your craft bag, get your little brown bag and with the flap up. And you're going to take some glue and spread it around the outside. And then you're going to take your lion's mane and put it around the glue then you're going to open it up open the flap and color it so it looks like the lion's mouth and then you're just going to put the little eyes on wherever you want and this will be your lion ready ready right, let's, do, let's it. do it let's do it like a lion Jerry Garcia <laughs> Whoa. So but he is so cool I'll never forget I'll never forget the oh, truth of the story that we can man. be anywhere and actually still remember that we can worship even though we're not in our place so of worship cool. because of this epic exactly. lion handbag we're totally safe the lion's not even hurting us thanks Miss Haley you're welcome God always is watching and protecting you even if you're not in your church and place of worship. Don't forget, guys, to send us your pictures of your lions. We can't wait to see the lions that you've made at home. And we'll stick them in the videos for the next week. 